Good morning, everyone. Um, and I want to start off actually by introducing myself. I, well, John kind of already did. Uh, my name is Graham Richardson. And that might seem a bit weird because uh, most of you already know me. So why am I introducing myself? But in a way, today really is a chance to uh, introduce myself to my family, first of all, who are here. And uh, they've always known me as a non-Christian and even to the community at Bridgeway. I mean, you guys know me, you see me, I come out to church every week, but maybe you don't know a lot more necessarily beyond that. So today's a, a great opportunity for me that I'm very thankful for. Um, I get to talk about my spiritual journey in public for the first time and also talk about why the baptism today is so important to me. So I'll just start at the beginning. Uh, as a kid, uh, my parents took my sister and I to church, but to be totally honest with you, uh, the main thing that I remember from those days is uh, the horrible scratchy wool pants that I absolutely hated wearing. So. Uh, I guess you could say that as a kid, church just uh, didn't, it didn't speak to me, it didn't resonate, and it, it didn't stick. So from there, uh, I can fast forward a bit to high school and then on through university, etc. Um, I was a bit of a cynical guy, <clears throat> and I surrounded myself with other non-believers, those were my friends, and uh, so as a result of that, partly I actually came to have a very deep-rooted suspicion of uh, organized religion. I, I kind of had a hardness in my heart against that. And um, when I thought about the church, really all that I could see of the church was the hypocrisy, you know, the, the corruption, violence, and injustice that have been perpetrated many times in, in the name of Jesus Christ. And, and I was stuck on that. Um, but I was never an atheist. Like, I wouldn't say that I disbelieved in God. Um, but I just didn't really know what I believed. Um, and I definitely had trouble with the idea that there could be just one answer, you know, one answer for the really difficult questions, you know, life, the universe, and everything, to uh, quote Douglas Adams. So, <clears throat> and especially because having one answer, you know, to me implies that other answers are wrong. So I had, I had difficulty with that. So then how did I get from there to here, to today, baptizing my kids? Well, I heard an expression once that, um, and in many ways it sums up my gradual transformation quite well and it's that if you open uh, when it comes to believing in God if you just open the door a crack it will swing open the rest of the way uh, for you and uh, taking that first step I think is really hard but if you can do that with a genuine heart then you know God will meet you the rest of the way so I, I believe that and I credit two people in particular with helping me open that door just a tiny little crack um, one is my beautiful wife and she is over there and the other is Pastor Danny um, so basically what happened was I started dating Jeannie and then I uh, quickly fell madly in love with Jeannie and then I started to realize, okay, holy cow, if I'm going to marry this girl, uh, I'm going to have to come to grips with this whole church thing, you know, it's really important to her. So I figured, okay, no problem, I can go to church, I'll go to church. I wasn't worried about changing my mind, I, w I wasn't worried about, um, I just thought I'll go through the motions, you know, and Jeannie and I will agree to disagree and that's fine and uh, the only real concern that I, that I had was like way distant in the future, I sort of wondered, okay, uh, you know, how will we address child rearing, but you know, in those days, that was, that was way far away, so. <clears throat> Not that far away, I guess. <laughs> anyway, so when I started coming to church, I have to admit, I definitely had my back up, you know, the, I uh, definitely was on edge a little bit, and it's funny because one of the very first sermons that I listened to was on money, was on tithing, so you can sort of imagine that I'm sitting there, and I'm still a little bit suspicious, and you know, I'm defensive, and then Pastor Danny's up there preaching, give me your money, and I was like, aha! I knew it! But uh, week after week, I was really struck by what I was hearing, you know. Um, the wisdom and, and especially the relevance of each sermon, they really had an impact on me. And uh, I, I, I could see that if I, was, if I was willing to be honest, I would be happier, I would be better off, I would be more fulfilled, I would be, in short, a better person if I could follow the kind of advice that I was hearing. And, uh, and uh, the community of Bridgeway Church as well has to be mentioned. I mean, they were very, of course, incredibly friendly, and very warm and welcoming. And everybody was incredibly happy too, which, you know, <clears throat> you just don't necessarily find that everywhere. That, it did strike me. Like, I noticed that. So, so gradually, I guess, uh, week after week, I got over my superficial objections to church. You know, it became obvious to me that uh, the terrible things that have been done in the name of God really are not a reflection on Christianity at all. They're a reflection on mankind. And um, I gained, I gained a framework, um, you know, a, a system to support what formerly, you know, what before was kind of a vague, sort of undefined spirituality, you know, where before I had sort of suspected that there was much more to life than, you know, much more than what you can see and what we all take for granted every day. But now I'm certain 
And I see the evidence of that everywhere I look. I see it in science, in all the scientific discoveries that happen day after day. I see it in other religions, which I'm, I'm very interested in reading about. And I see it in my own life. So where before I had generally believed, yeah, it's, you know, it's good to be a good person, but now, you know, with these sermons and through the Bible, you gain this exquisite blueprint, not only for how to be good, but like what it means to really be good. And, and not only that, but what it costs to be good and, and how high of an expectation I have to set for myself. So all of this stuff was really uh, powerful and really overwhelming. <clears throat> so where am I today? Well, <clears throat> I mean, I, just let me say that it has been for me a very long, long road. And I still feel that I'm very much at the beginning, very near the beginning. But I have a growing love for God. And I'm very proud and very happy to stand here and say that today. And um, most importantly, I, I believe that, what, that the Bible reveals the truth about who God is and about what he wants from us, about, about what our lives are supposed to be for. And I just feel that my life has been really tremendously enriched by my growing faith. So I'm very, very, very grateful for it. And in a sense, I kind of figured out what leap of faith, you know, what that expression really means. I used to think that it meant that you could jump because you believed. You could take that leap. But really, I think uh, instead, I found out the long way that it means taking that first step even though you still have some uncertainty and some doubt and God will meet you halfway more than halfway so <clears throat> I mean I still struggle occasionally I, but I, I in my opinion wrestling with my faith is healthy and uh, I feel good about that and I, I used to want to have absolute certainty to just know for sure but you know how could I you know our feeble human brains, I, we can't comprehend God. We can't expect to comprehend God. And we can't set that expectation, I don't think. That's, that's me anyways. And we certainly don't get the luxury of proof. We don't get proof in this life. Um, <clears throat> we just have to make do with what's available to us. And for me, the more that I learn to let go of that need for absolute certainty and to let go of like that you know, a fear of being wrong, then the more I start to realize how natural faith is and how comfortable it is, if I could use that word. I like believing in God. It's instinctive to me now. It's, in, it's emotional. And I feel it in my gut, and I really think that it's not even something that... I, don't, I think if it's 100% intellectual, I don't think it can work really that way. So, And the other good news, I take a lot of strength from this, is that I don't need to have all the answers right now. In Paul's letter uh, to the Philippians, chapter 1, verse 6, I, I really love this verse and he states for I'm confident of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus and you know God is working in my life he's working in me and I'm looking forward to what he has in store for me for what he has in store for my family my career and for my faith I feel a really deep-seated joy and a real optimism about life and what's better I believe that God provides the means for that optimism to be sustainable regardless of what comes your way and in the meantime my life just keeps getting better and better you know I mean I really am unbelievably blessed unbelievably blessed which sort of brings me back to you know in a very long-winded kind of roundabout way um, back to today's baptism because you know even though I'm spending all this time talking about myself it's not about me really today it's about two of the best blessings in my life my two unbelievable boys William and Alexander and today, what this ceremony means to me, it's my commitment to raise these boys according to Christian values uh, in the hopes that they will also know God and perhaps that they will know him a little bit more easily, if I could say that, more easily than I have. And I, I want to be absolutely clear, because this is important to me, I, I have no interest in spoon-feeding Christianity to my kids. I want them to question. I really believe in that. I want them to wrestle. But I also want them to start off seeing the world with God in it and then they can go from there. And that, that to me is very important now. Because I'm convinced that knowing God, for these boys, pursuing a relationship with God, willingly submitting to his wisdom, for me, that's the best shot that they have to achieve genuine self-confidence and to lead happy and fulfilled lives. Any parent, every parent wants the best for their kids, but we don't, you know, parents don't get to choose no matter how hard they try, they, they don't get to choose what their kids will believe or how their kids will behave because every person has to find their own way in life. That's just how it works. And the same is true for faith. There's a theological debate that I'm not going to pretend that I understand, but it basically asks, do we choose God or does God choose us? You know, is faith, 
is it a is it a choice that we make or is it a gift given to us? So I don't know the answer. But I mean, the point that I'm trying to make is that in either of those two scenarios, the question of William and Alexander, the question of their faith, is out of our hands. It's out of my hands and Jeannie's hands. We can't control them and what they'll believe, and we can't control God. So this baptism is my commitment to the things that I can control. I, I can pray for their faith, that they'll grow up and know God. I can ask my family and this whole congregation to pray for them as well, and to surround them with God's love, to set that example. And most importantly of all, for me, you know, this baptism is my declaration that I will set an example with my life by pursuing a relationship with God, by joyfully submitting to his wisdom, and seeking to really to live a real faith and not just go through the motions. That's my commitment, which is, of course, much easier said than done. <clears throat> you know, we all know that it's a, very, it's a tremendous struggle, day in and day out, to try to do what we should be doing instead of what we want to be doing. Um, but in the face of that challenge, I am unbelievably grateful because I have my wife by my side, and I have my family, I have the men of Bridgeway, I have this whole wonderful congregation, <clears throat> all around me, lifting me up and supporting me. And that counts for a lot. And best of all, I have God. So that's about it. Oh, yeah.